debt. We all have it, whether it's a car payment or mortgage. Many times, we all find ourselves on a never-ending payment plan for the finer things in life. This is also the case for businesses. Businesses also have debt, but it is characterized as a fixed payment to the debt holder, and usually with interest. Now in business, when calculating debt, you must utilize a debt instrument. So, what are the debt instruments? The first debt instrument is a bond, in particular, a financial bond. A bond allows an issuing corporation to be able to repay a specified amount at a specified maturity date, usually 20 to 30 years from the date of issuance. Most of us have heard the word bonds in context with governments, but many corporations issue bonds to raise capital also. So, how long can you have a bond for before it matures? Well, you can have a bond for 10 to 40 years in return for cash. Most financial institutions recommend waiting until the bond's maturity date before cashing it in. But you can buy and sell bonds like any other financial instrument. The price of the bond will fluctuate as the risk factors of the company change and as the relative worth of the bond compares to the market values available in the current market on any given day. Each bond comes with something called a bond indenture. It's a legally binding contract that ties the bonds to numerous amounts of agreements. These agreements ensure that the financial institutions that sell the bonds adhere to all the laws that they have made to the bondholders. Notice that I said bondholders, as in more than one. Bonds are typically held by multiple investors. A $1 million debt, for instance, may be split into a thousand $1,000 bonds. As such, it's impractical and unethical to expect the financial institution issuing the bond to enter into an agreement with each bondholder. Instead, a sole trustee is appointed to represent all of the bondholders. The trustee ensures that the financial institution adheres to the rights of each bondholder. If for whatever reason, the banking institution does not adhere to the rules outlined in the bond, the trustee has the authority to pursue legal action on the bondholder's behalf. The trustee's job is to ensure that the company pays interest on its bonds, all rules are followed, and disclose any pertinent information to the bondholders. There are a few types of bonds, and all of them serve different purposes. The first is a debenture bond. A debenture bond is basically an act of faith by a financial institution. The company awards you the bond, hoping that your company's profits will allow you to be able to pay the interest and principal for the bond. There's no special collateral that the bondholder can lay claim to. However, should bankruptcy happen, debenture holders would not have priority over other general creditors. A debenture bond is not to be confused with a subordinate debenture where an individual will not receive any liquidation payments until you satisfy your previous debt. With a subordinate debenture, if you are a business owner, you will not be able to receive any payments until you clear your debt. A mortgage bond is considered a less risky debt than debentures and has a very low interest rate. This bond can be protected by non-real estate assets. If the individual and or company does not pay the holder, they have the right to take the assets pledged or collateralized as a form of repayment. For instance, a company declares bankruptcy and they must liquidate their property and other physical assets in order to pay their debtors. The next bond is a coupon bond. A coupon bond, as the name suggests, has similarities to a regular coupon in its anonymity. There's no name on the bond or sale record. The owner of a coupon bond is not registered and therefore does not collect interest. The coupon holder is given an attached coupon and can redeem the bond under the indenture on the dates the coupons mature. Unlike the coupon bond, a corporate bond is redeemable prior to the bond's maturity date. It allows an individual or business to buy any outstanding bonds from the bondholder at any time. One of the benefits of this type of bond is that it allows the company to protect itself from a high cost of debt if interest rates fall. Serial bonds mature at different fixed dates. A 30-year serial bond, for instance, can have multiple maturity dates. Some of the bonds can mature at 25, while the rest of it can mature at 30 years. What's great about this type of bond is that you have the option of cashing out at any time. Lastly, we'll touch upon a more flexible bond type, the convertible bond. This type of bond can be converted into a share of the company or option. This feature makes them an attractive option to investors. However, they typically pay a slightly lower interest rate. Now that we've looked at debt instruments and a few basic approaches to debt accounting, you can weigh the pros and cons of different bonds. 